Hi, David Odell here with Odell Complete Concrete. This is the rebuilding of the disaster that hit uh, my vacation home in Fort Mojave, Arizona. So here's the aftermath after that microburst tornado hit. Now here's the uh, well house that I put in. Um, not four hours later, it got blown down. And I just, now I just got back to the town to kind of clean up the mess crushing the shed right now. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. This is a little powerhouse. Make a nice, neat little bundle. So I compacted that shed, that way we can uh, recycle it. Now here's the fencing that blew down and now we're starting to take it apart and we're going to start rebuilding. What we're going to do is the top rail was in pretty good shape, it didn't really get bent up too much, but the post were history. Some of them got uh, completely pulled out of the ground with the footing intact connected to the post some of them the pipes just slid right out and wasn't really connected to the footing at all like you can see that one just slid out the concrete really didn't bond to the actual post I was using a strap initially but I found it slid a lot so we went to the chain and that worked a lot better it really hooked up on the pipe Normally, you know, when I've pulled post, usually um, it comes out with the footing or it breaks the post, one or the other. In this case, this, a lot of the posts just slid right on out. Here's my little three-foot Vermeer with the uh, hoe attachment. I'm digging some new post, post holes, basically. I'm putting exactly where they were previously. So I'm pulling out any remnants of a footing that was in there previously which gave me part, part of the hole that I wanted without having to dig dirt out. I just removed the concrete itself. But I am making these holes a little bit bigger than they were previously. Because they didn't... I mean, I don't know that any kind of fencing would have held up with the conditions that we had here. I mean, it might have. Because I think when you look at a fence as a complete system, meaning all the posts working together as one unit, I think if you even just have one post that fails in a, in a run like this, that puts undue pressures against all of the other posts. So the whole system fails. You know, it's like, you know, you're only as good as your weakest link type of thing. And that's what we had here. And I do mean fun. Typically, you know, breaking concrete is not that much fun, but in this case, it is because it's so easy. So I don't know. You could really call it concrete, technically. Let's see. Whoa! A half swing, and there's nothing left of it. See what other defects we can find here's a nice post we can take a look at <clears throat> let's see how this one crumbles whoa mm. actually that's easier to break than some soils I've had to deal with. That's refreshing. Oh, here's another one we can explore. Wow. That's just... 
Huh. Look at that. Let's look at that. This is the concrete. My hands really ain't that strong, but I guess they don't really need to be. Hmm. Always thought concrete work was hard till today. Ah, I found another one we can go play with. Well, out of all the posts that we pulled out, uh, only three of them still had a footing attached to the pole. All the rest were already uh, not attached. Now, these ones that did come out intact with the footing still attached somewhat to the pole, uh, they actually came out of the ground during the tornado. And that's why the concrete's still on them. It came out in one chunk. But look at that. I just turned that back into just dirt. Wow, I, dro I just dropped it and concrete fell off. Huh. God. Wish all the footings I broke were that easy to remove. Let's take a look at this little jewel. We set this last night, a little line post here. We're looking at 200 feet of failed fencing and, and uh, this is kind of gonna get the sag out of the line. And it's setting real pretty right now. What we got around this post is uh, 160 pounds of concrete. I think on the old system we were lucky to have 100 pounds. These pipes are getting piping hot already. Here we are at 8 in the morning. So there's the concrete mix we got. I think these are 80 pounders and we have a full pallet. And we're going to use all of those putting this back together plus um i scavenged about four bags that i had excess from a previous job that's a nine cubic foot mix or so you can get uh, quite a bit in this one gas powered so it's got plenty of power to turn it what I discovered on those posts that we removed it looks like um, that particular concrete mix that they use if you could call it that I think mostly it's probably like a dirt with a little bit of cement in it maybe um, some crushed road base or something and then add some cement to it but not really concrete it's not like bad concrete or you know washed sand with washed egg or getting cement it's just kind of uh whatever you can kind of find because you don't typically you can't crush concrete in your hands you know when it's dry like that so that means it's less than you know 300 psi Now, as I put these posts, what I'm doing is every time I put a post and I plumb it, I take one wrap with that string line around it because I have that string line set down about an inch and a half from the top of posts. So I, I take a single wrap around each line post. And if I have the tension just right on either side of each post I attach the line to, it actually holds the post plumb and I can move on to the next, uh, the next post without having to recheck it. Is that line tension is actually holding it plumb. Now that top rail and top caps, that was all, um, we, we ended up reusing some of that. Now 
Now, as far as this privacy fencing goes, wind barrier, um, I'm removing it all because I don't want it to blow down again if we get hit with another microburst tornado it's gonna blow it down regardless regardless what I do with these posts unless I put them at five foot centers and use um, a lot heavier pipe it might hold but why take a chance so we're just gonna leave it open and wait for these uh, oleander bushes that I have planted every 10 foot to give me some kind of a wind barrier and privacy now here's a nice thing I came up with on site so we, we initially started to try to pull it up by hand this chain link fencing so we could tie it back up and then uh, Tyler came up with the idea why don't we just hook the bucket on it and I said well yeah let's give it a shot if it bends the fabric then we'll just go back to the hand method but it didn't bend it at all and it worked like a charm you can actually use this a uh, system like this to tighten your chain link and tie it as well as pull it up all in one shot if you rigged it up right so once we got all the posts and which was the hardest part of the whole job was mixing the concrete setting all the posts putting the uh, chain link up wasn't too bad at all with the tractor holding it in place now I'd noticed um, on both corner posts from the 220 foot run the corner posts corner posts were still there but because the fabric fell down it pulled the corners in about six inches because there was no 45 degree angle bracing on the corners now if it had that it probably would have held and you could get really a tight chain link fabric on there but in this case residential uh, it didn't have that so I had to pull those corner posts back to the tractor pop the top rail in to hold it and then put the fabric up but it worked out we got it done and the good news is by going back here to have it do this stuff I was able to go out on the boat and catch a few fish out on Lake Mojave because that lake is actually over full not like Lake Mead which is above Lake Mojave so anyway have a good one